All right, and it's now 25 minutes to 7 o'clock. In case you're joining us now on Morning Express, welcome aboard. I sure do hope that you're keeping yourself safe and dry. The weather out there in Nairobi, it's very wet and it has been. And uh, the weatherman has also said that that may continue for a few more days. So brace yourself. Well, it's time for us to look at the dailies this morning and see what's making headlines. And joining me to have that conversation is Kevin Osido. Welcome, Kevin. Uh, awesome. For you to make it on time, I don't know if your area is raining. Was it wet all night? Was it raining all night? I had to be up by about 3.30 to keep the time. Wow, because it's, been, it's actually <laughs> been raining almost the whole, the whole night. Mm. It's still drizzling out there. And I think that uh, the beauty of it is... Uh, how we use the waters that are going down there. I was just mentioning earlier that somebody said, I read somewhere, and I think it's true, that God can send us a blessing, but because of lack of planning and preparedness, mm -hmm. it becomes a curse. Precisely. Because all this water that uh, is being wasted is water that we certainly would use in many ways. Uh, we have yeah. many taps in Nairobi that are running dry yet, it's wet outside. It not just, not, not just running dry, have been running dry. Have, for have the been last, dry for a long Yeah, for time. the last almost four to six years, Mike. Absolutely. I think it's... Uh, as you rightfully said, it's it's a true case of uh, preparedness because as much as we are talking about the water itself for our own usage and consumption, we also have a lot of havoc mm. and uh, destruction that uh, is taking place there. Uh, lots of uh, bridges that uh, have been and washed death, out. I mean, we've just uh, done yeah. a report of a young lady who was trying to save somebody and mm -hmm. ended up, you know, drowning herself. Yeah. Uh, and I think I read somewhere we have over 130 lives lost already. Yeah, actually, the, yeah, the police spokesman, uh, actually the government spokesman gave a statement, was it yesterday? Mm. Yeah, on, in terms of number of people that we have lost. And it's quite unfortunate because uh, every year, in fact, we have rainy seasons and uh, government has in, in a way failed to not only rely on the advice from the weatherman, mm -hmm. a meteorological uh, department, but has also not been very uh, progressive in terms of ensuring that departments like uh, ag agencies like NDMA, National mm -hmm. Disaster Management Authority, among several others, including even county governments, because mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to have a forecast which then is supposed to prepare us to not only save lives, but also ensure that uh, Kenyans have have a way of seeing that the government is, is responding to these perennial issues of, of floods and rains because it's really a paradox. One time we are asking Kenyans to contribute because we are suffering drought. At, at another level, we are talking about what we are addressing right now. So I think uh, the beauty of what God is doing is he's also trying to help us open our eyes mm. in terms of where are the gaps and how do we fill them. Absolutely. And uh, on page two of the standard is uh, a story that tells you state to release 200 billion as floods wreak havoc. Now that we've already started talking about the floods, just looking at page two. And as you can see, there's floods left, right and center. And uh, as usual, we seem not to be prepared, despite the fact that we had uh, a warning from the weatherman, uh, but there you go. National Treasury plans to mobilize more funds by sending out financial appeals to deal with disaster. That's matters to do with floods. But let's look at the front page, and that's the headline of the standard. When old friends become enemies. Now, this is um, the current deputy president for Kenya and uh, the opposition leader, ODM leader, let me say, Raila Odinga, because uh, it's a blurry line to say whether he yeah. is an opposition leader or is in government. <laughs> uh, but the tension between Raila and Ruto demonstrates just how far apart two political allies can drift for only 11 years ago. Uh, we remember that the two of them were uh, bedfellows, so to speak, uh, you know, united. But this, again, I think underscores and mm. highlights the um, what I would call political friendships that never last, but it is really more of a matter of interest. Very true. And um, in fact, uh, let me just say that I would not be surprised if in the next few months we see another handshake between the former prime minister and the deputy president. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that would lead to a merger or uh, a, a partnership between the two working to, together to give Kenyans another government is a way of looking at it from where I sit. And that is because we have that kind of history as a nation that two people or three or four or even political parties that have had a very serious, aggressive um, uh, political di differences, differences mm -hmm. can still be able to come together and work. Mm -hmm. But I think that for me, what then comes up from a political leadership perspective is the place of ideology and personality in our politics. Because we have not, as a country, yes, I, I believe we are making strides towards having a, a, um, 
a scenario where Kenyans can be able to rely on political parties that have been able to or that will be able to champion for certain interests as opposed to to individuals because right now what is happening and we have been able to see it is that uh, Kenyans are being treated to a scenario where everybody is asking what do you have in your pocket mm -hmm. both in terms of money but also in terms of not only in terms of money but also in terms of a number of people who then are, are used quote unquote to ascend to political power and because the census report also just came out yesterday and you noted the first nine days of the release of the report, how politicians were out there and they were saying we can't accept this report. How come we have been one million? Mm. Now the report is saying we are 300,000 and several others saying we we thank the report for now giving us a giving true, us f true reflection of, of who we are. Mm. And that really presents what we are, we are seeing at the front page of the standard because it's old friends becoming enemies and old enemies becoming new friends. Mm. But then the place of it, in my view, is what is the space for Kenyans in all this? So my way of looking at it is that we should begin to or continue to organize ourselves beyond the political strategies and designs that take place in these in this boardrooms. Because people sit and uh, enumerate Kenyans and then they go out to political rallies. And uh, Mike, you and I and several others have been here to talk about number of people who attend rallies on Tuesdays and right. on Wednesdays, when, whereas they're supposed to be seated somewhere, somewhere being constructive know, towards yeah. national development. And mm -hmm. that really presents the scenario, the case through which this kind of political friendships are done because people sit and they ask themselves from the community that you come from because because it's no longer a political ideology it's a political numbers mm. so you are asked how many people can you bring on board and that that's really what that forms, forms the, basis the kind of, of friendships, friendships that we enmity. see exactly. and well let's wait and see because i've had several political pundits saying it is not impossible to rule out mm. raila and uh, ruto coming together so what again for me is a huge lesson is yeah. what we Kenyans observe out of that because at the end of the day you may have those allied to Ruto and those are allied to Raila right now not seeing eye, eye to eye, eye. Yeah, but true. when they come together <laughs> you're left out in the cold so really I quite think that should be a great lesson for us yeah. as Kenyans yeah quite 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 true and and one more thing Mike is uh, the kind of governance systems that we are putting in place. I expect, for instance, that now that the Mwesh Maruto is a deputy president, that he should be able to also undertake a validation process of what is working for political, um, for the strengthening of political parties in Kenya. So that uh, the kind of, yes, we have had them work together before and now we are not working together because he has now the opportunity to make those kind of high level decisions to inform even how the register of political parties is supposed to engage with political parties the kind of policy frameworks the pi the kinds of constitutional changes now we have the opportunity with the the building bridges report that just came out mm. i am looking forward to seeing how the two of them can work towards strengthening uh, the kind of system that kenyans are looking forward to where we do not have to necessarily rely on individuals mm. or personalities but on how governments can be strengthened including institutions to respond to the needs of kenyans and their aspirations and absolutely of and system. of course that's assuming that they do have the interests of kenya at heart i agree with let's you. move on to page three because that's a matter i'm sure that we can discuss till the cows come home yeah. and page three there's a an article there how men are trapped in vicious digital debt and this is to do with mobile applications and apps that help you borrow money uh, that are left right and center and unfortunately there seems to be a trend where men are out to improve or not to improve to impress yeah. uh, their fellow colleagues and peers and end up in a lot of debt and you know you have a case in you know scenario where John borrows from Jack to pay David and uh, this is something that is a cycle so there's an article there 93 percent of mobile loans were provided by banks Mike this is uh, this is paradoxical in my view yes presents the reality on the ground mm. we are just coming from a scenario where we are saying we to go different mm. ground <laughs> but, really, different. Uh -huh, but this is really the true picture of what is happening but it's because the economy has the government in my view has not done very well in terms of expanding opportunities for economic growth because the economy can only grow when people are actively involved mm. people are engaged in activities that contribute to um, economic growth which would be very different in fact I, I thank the president for coming up with a big four agenda for where manufacturing is, is part of it but I don't think that even within PDU the presidential um, delivery, delivery unit. unit they have taken the time to think through what amount of value is that particular agenda uh, adding? 
to national growth and development because then the assumption would be that if you have uh, and and for Kenya it is assumed that men form the bigger chunk of those who are supposedly meant to uh, are, are rather expected to contribute to that economic growth so if this is happening with men then the question then would be how about the, the women? But that is not true again on the other side because the people who have proved, uh, proved to be as organized within economic growth uh, circles and narratives around how uh, resources and especially money is shared among uh, social, uh, um, social circles have been women. And that has been through ch uh, the formation of chamas and just coming out there to be able to sit and, uh, and save because I have friends, including family members, who actually save every month. And at the end of the year, like now, they're already planning for, uh, they, are, they call it Kuvunja Chama. Mm -hmm. So everybody comes and you are given what you, what you are able to save. So I think that uh, this, the, the, the story here is supposed to help us to deal with what I would call a loan appetite, which now moves from just dependency towards uh, banks but looking at how can I be talk so we're talking Mike to be able to help me to deal with helping somebody to address their, address their and, and some of these things are very close to our hearts like uh, a family member has, has, has fallen sick so you need money to go to the hospital mm. or you want to buy unga or you want to deal with school fees for example and or even rent you know so I think that these are signs and symptoms of I would not say a failing economy but I would say that there are signs and symptoms that are supposed to send us to a corner where we need to begin to, to think ask and ourselves some ask, yeah, difficult questions what is happening yeah. and especially because if, if people and men are the people who the society expects them to, re to respond to many questions mm -hmm. within the family and the society as well. Particularly when it comes to the financial aspect. Exactly. And now the report here is saying that it is actually the distribution uh, of contract by gender from those who are borrowing here is 65 percent for men it's for men. it's it's excessive it's, it's quite a uh, dire you know it puts us in dire streets but there you yeah. go that's a story that you need to read for yourself and see what that is all about but let's move on to page eight mm -hmm. and this is matters education magoha tells of nat on supply of course books we do know that uh, the, uh nat have issued a 22 day strike notice uh, should some of the th issues that they are asking to be dealt with not be dealt with, one of those being the fact that apparently the cost books that are being uh, supplied are not being done in order. But according to the CS for Education, he says, well, forget about that. That's not about to change. And we're waiting to see how this is going to play out. It just seems that there is no friendship between NAT and the ministry or their employer. And this, of course, is something that is not new. We have had strike notices between NAT, or rather from NAT, quite a number of times. But as usual, it's the learner that is left to um, suffer. Very true. I liked the fact that uh, the CS Education had a sitting with uh, the primary school heads, uh, head teachers. Mm -hmm. I listened to his the, the entire speech because I was watching KTN News and they were able to cover that live. But right. I kept asking myself very many questions mm -hmm. because uh, the CS, in my view, did not generate or bring out serious policy concerns that teachers have been raising. And this, as you rightfully said, is also not new. For a number of times, uh, many times here we have been calling for a dialogue, conversation between the ministry and the teachers. And I am grateful that now it is taking place. But Michael, we need to see the results, the mm. fruits of those kind of kinds of conversations. Because if teachers in, in June last year already began talking about CBC and how prepared they were to also be, be able to generate books, which then were expected to, to help teachers to facilitate their work within classrooms in schools. Mm. In December 2019, the same question is, being, is still being raised around the source of those books. In fact, in some of the stories that, you, that were carried by the media, some of the teachers were saying we cannot rely on, on some of those books because we, they have not been uh, accredited. We do not know the publishers. And those are, those are serious uh, telltale signs of what the CS and his team at the ministry really need to deal with. So what I would say is that moving forward is that uh, the ministry needs to have as many platforms for conversations with the teachers. These are head teachers. These are high level policy people within the schools. And if they say that there are things which they are uncomfortable with, I think it is only incumbent and, and honorable of the ministry to sit down and find amicable ways of dealing with those issues. Because otherwise, as you rightfully said, but beyond then, 
what kind of future are we really preparing our children, our children towards? for? Yeah. All right, let's now take, change focus and look at the Daily Nation this morning and uh, the headline. There's also, well, there's a picture up there. 132 people killed since the start of rains. That we've already discussed and very, very unfortunate. But there's a picture that describes or shows exactly how the state is in terms of floods. But the headline on the Daily Nation revealed the truth behind the handshake. Now we have um, Musale Mudavadi, uh, the party leader for ANC coming out to say or give us what he says is the truth behind the handshake. But one might ask the question, why bring this information now? All along you have said you did not know what was going on, you did not know how the handshake came up, but now he comes up with a revelation apparently that there was some underhand uh, forces <laughs> from you know, Western countries that were putting pressure on Raila Odinga by way of um, withdrawing visas and uh, also you know, some financial support so I don't know how do we treat this in terms of how genuine it is and the timing you know Mike I would not want to even attempt to equate Mwishimi wa Musalia Mudavadi to Miguna Miguna because this is not very far away <laughs> yes. from what uh, General Miguna Miguna as he would calls do. himself has mm. not just will but has actually done and has and uh, has continued to do mm. uh, what what happened at Bomas which was a very long narration between of His Excellency the President and the former Prime Minister. In fact, for 44 minutes, the President was standing there telling Kenyans off the cuff, speaking from the heart and bottom of his head and mind, heart and soul, and he kept telling us what really transpired. I agree with Mwishimua Musalia Mudavadi that it is, it, is, it is okay for us to have revelations of really transpired, but I agree with you. Why come at this particular point in time, especially when he has come out there to show himself as someone who is not for the, the Building Bridges uh, initiative. In fact, even yesterday, I think he issued a press statement where he was trashing the report and mm. saying, this is not what Kenyans are looking forward to. I would have expected Mwishima Mundavadi from his speech at Bomas because he mentioned the economy three times, which I really liked because he said, Kenyans know what is ailing them. We understand where our problems are. Let us deal with those issues at different levels. But at the common Mwananchi level, it is economy, 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 economy. I expected that, in fact, he would have written a whole book because he's also been a um, um, minister for finance in the past, that instead of writing a book about revelations of what transpired, we already know even what has not been said. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we already know. So spending time reminding us about a past which we really do not want to keep dwelling upon, mm -hmm. especially because we have serious issues to deal with, issues of economy, issues of security, education issues, health issues, because health in counties is, is, is falling. It's not working. Why don't we spend time and pick it up from where he began? Okay, so one of the issues is economic growth. So how do we fix this economy? And spend time putting a whole page newspaper on his proposals and gaps that he has identified from the Building Bridges report on how we can deal with those serious issues. Mm. But this is Kenya, and our first story was a political story. So these are politicians. And Unfortunately, they, yeah. this is how they want to fix us in a box, and this is how they have covered themselves mm. to be able to push narratives. Every single day we wake up talking politicians, eating politicians, and even working politicians. All right, and uh, well, the <laughs> book, I guess, is out, and uh, that is one that some Kenyans may want to read. Maybe you want to get yourself a copy and just see what is behind the handshake according to Musalia Mudavadi. On page 8, we have uh, another story there. Cheral Gay charged with incitement. And not just to concentrate on this particular case, but also just to reflect and ask ourselves the question of what the KNHCR is there and whether they still, you know, um, keep up to their mandate uh, in terms of ensuring that we have a cohesive country. Yeah. So that is uh, both KN. KNHCR and NCIC, NCIC National NCIC, Cohesion NCIC. and Integration Commission. And that's a quite a, diff uh, <laughs> a very funny way of looking at it because uh, one of the institutions that Kenyans, especially as we head towards elections, have failed to have very good confidence in is NCIC. But whereas that is happening, when you go to a number of co uh, counties, especially towards elections, they map counties at, uh, as, uh, as hotspots and that they are able to, to come up with activities, programs that are going to deal with those issues. Mike, from where I sit, I think that this is progressive 
especially because we are seeing high level politicians to the level of a senator being charged in court for hate speech and incitement. That is very progressive. Mm. But we need to also look at past cases because this is also not new. We have had even up to levels of governors. Mwachari uh, Tingilu, for example, has been uh, charged, I think three other very senior poli uh, politicians in this country and a number of people. So that then takes us to the leadership of the commission because initially we had um, the former speaker of the Senate, Mwishimua Ole Kaparo, mm. who was the chair of, of the commission. Right now they have new commissioners who I think that uh, are coming from a background of uh, proper engagement with the political and of course institutional and uh, institutional and expectations of Kenyans towards what really the functions of NCIC are supposed to, to be. But let's not just spend time dwelling on NCIC. We also need to talk about judiciary because really these people are taken to, to courts. How, how much time do these kind of cases take, for example? Number two is what is the kind of uh, feedback? Mm. How do we get feedback? to the citizens because a senator is not a small person. This is a senator for Nandi and the people of Nandi, I'm happy that they have not come to the front pages on the, and uh, television to say this is, to say an, this is yeah, an attack on our person. And when Kenyans now get to that level of telling you by their mic, you ni story yako. So yeah. if you came here and you said things which we did not like, mm. we didn't prepare you to go say them. So you deal with your issues. Mm. And uh, as, uh, at the same time also, allow us to uh, to gain from service delivery because until when Kenyans get to that level then I believe that even institutions will be able to be strengthened because I can imagine the kind of agony that some of these institutions go through when you have arrested Mike from uh, Standard Media and staff from Standard Media are throwing the law courts and they are demonstrating on the streets and saying release him, release him, release him. You know even when you are seated in your office you are wondering so where is the ethics behind right. all and these where issues the and where is the justice system and how, and how work, do we yeah. deal with it. So yeah. I believe that these are, these are progressive steps but there is a lot that we still need to do. There are a number of young people like myself and several others who are also spewing extreme hate, uh, hatred or hate, hate mes messages on uh, social media mm -hmm. or various online platforms. This needs to also go into, to into just identifying them and having them prosecuted if they have been found to be culpable. All right, and uh, because of time, that's where we're going to have to wind up the newspaper review. Thank you very much, Kevin Osido, uh, uh, who is a director at um, County Governance Watch. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is now just about three minutes to seven o'clock. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, it's time for us to be on Vibes Radio, and uh, this is where we converge and TV and radio come together. And we are going to be looking at the BBI report, which uh, I must say Kevin Osido has done a fantastic job of printing himself one a copy. I don't know how many Kenyans are keen enough to get themselves a copy and uh, this has cost him a fair penny uh, to print it out. I would have expected that, you know, with the task force that we had, they would have had some copies to give out. But no, so far I think we've gone digital, maybe in the interest of also saving our forests and uh, ensuring. So many people will access this online, so mm. maybe we should have a simplified or an abridged version. Even if it because was, you know, one printed exactly, on, on, on newspapers, paper yeah. quality of this kind so that it's able to be distributed. Sure, there sure. you go. So yeah. that's what we're going to be looking at. Building Bridges uh, Task Force Report. Did it meet your expectations? And there was also the body language between the president and uh, the deputy president. That's yeah. something that I'd like to hear what <laughs> can you think and feel about it. But for now, we're going to take a short break. Do stay with us right here on Morning Express.